Ever since I started my ceramic rocket engine series, I have been getting a lot of comments saying, Joe, your ceramic rocket engines are always melting down. Why don't you just 3D print them in metal, dude? And from that, dude, I get that the people posting these comments are not aware that with the price of a metal 3D printer, you can literally buy a shitload of Tesla cars and spell your name with them. I mean, you would have to have a very simple name, like Tom, or Jay, or Sia. My point is that, as it's obvious that Sia is not made out of titanium, it's also obvious that I'm not made out of gold, so I can't afford a metal 3D printer. Which leads me to this video, because if I can't buy, I DIY. This is a 3D printer. More specifically, an FDM 3D printer that uses deposition of melted plastic to create 3D models. To do just that, they have a spool of plastic filament that is fed to an extruder and pushed forward into a nozzle at high temperature. The nozzle melts the plastic, while the printer draws the several layers that make up the object. The way in which a 3D printer actually works is pretty simple, but also reminds me of another machine that I have. This is my welding machine. It's as crappy as they come and costed me about $120. In its core is very similar to the 3D printer. It has a spool of metal filament that is fed to an extruder and comes out of the nozzle to be deposited on a surface. Now, one must wonder, what would happen if one strapped a welding machine to a 3D printer? Would it 3D print metal parts? Probably not, because it's a very stupid idea and will probably damage both equipment. Even though, just because an idea seems stupid, does that mean we shouldn't try it? Well, that's exactly what it means. But it doesn't matter, because I'm going to try it anyway. To do that, one must first understand how a 3D printer moves, because what a 3D printer does in a nutshell is draw several 2D layers at several heights to create a 3D model. These movements come from orders, and these orders are written in a language called G-code. To better explain G-code, I took the liberty of removing the thing that spits out plastic from the 3D printer and take a picture of the support that holds it. Then, I used my 3D modeling powers to create a customized support that is able to support a pen. I fixed that support to the printer support, so I could support a red marker, that is red like the subscribe button you can click to support this channel. Now, let's just imagine that I want to order the printer to draw a simple square. I would open a notepad and write G90 that tells the printer it needs to count its position from the origin, which is there. Then, I would tell her G1, which means go. X139, Y90, that sets the position where the pen needs to go, and F600, that tells the printer at what speed to move. After that, I would set three more points, and that's it, let's see if it works. And there you go, a square. I mean, it would have done a better job if I had told her to lift the z-axis when the pen is not supposed to draw, but still, pretty cool. Now, G-code is pretty simple, but it can only draw straight lines. So, how does one draw a curve? Well, the answer to that is... you don't. What you do is draw a ton of small straight lines to give the illusion that you have a curve. Using that trick, you can draw anything that comes to mind, even the most complex and intriguing geometries. The fun of it is trying to guess what the printer is drawing before it's finished. Can you guess what that is? Never gonna give you up, yeah. never gonna let you down, never gonna play the original because it's copyrighted. Sorry for that. I couldn't resist. Next, I 3D printed an adapter to hold the nozzle from the welding machine and an incorporated support to use the fan from the hot end to cool the nozzle. Smart, right? Don't forget to subscribe. The welding machine requires me to push a button so it extrudes out the metallic filament but I can't really push the button while the printer is working. So, I stole the RC circuit from my Wankel Engine RC car to activate a MOSFET module that would push the button for me. Works pretty well. To accommodate the circuit on the printer, I 3D printed a box. I know, I can't believe I 3D printed a box. I feel disgusted with myself. Because I can't really print metal on top of an aluminium bed that comes with a printer, I got myself some sheet steel metal. After everything was set in place, I gave it a test. Oh my god, it melted! So, the support melted. And one of the reasons for that is the fact that the fan was not turning on and doing its job. Apparently, on 3D printers, the fan only turns on when the hot end is at a temperature superior to 60 degrees Celsius. 
My mistake was that, because I was not really using the hot end, I defined the temperature as 20 degrees Celsius. To fix this problem, I taped the heating element and the sensor together, and I set the temperature to 60 degrees. And ta-da! The fan works. Now, you're probably aware of this, but I'm not a welding specialist of any kind. But I do remember that the pros normally angle the nozzle to get better results. So what I did was 3D print a new adapter that has an angled support. Sponsor time. I'm going bald. And that sucks. Don't get me wrong, there's no problem with being bald if you enjoy it. I mean, Vin Diesel is doing just fine. But I like my hair. I find it beautiful. And so does my mother. The fact is that most men manifest some kind of baldness by the time they reach 35. And in the old days, the only solution would be to staple ant legs to your head. But nowadays, we have Kips. Kips is a great service that not only provides affordable versions of FDA-approved medications for hair loss, but also offers medical follow-up by health professionals. You don't need to leave the comfort of your own home to get treatment, but you do need to hurry, because prevention is key. If you're ready to take action, go to keeps.com slash Indexa, or click the link in the description down below, to get 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Indexa. By clicking the link in the description down below, you're not only helping yourself, but you're also helping me make more videos like this. And to that I say, hurrah! Back to the video. Oh my god! I can tell you right now that I only realized how bad of an idea it was putting fans and a plastic adapter that close to metal being melted when I saw it catch fire. To solve this particular problem, I 3D printed an adapter that holds the weld nozzle a little bit higher and far away from the heat. The downside from this is that I lose printing height. The plus side of this is that I don't need a fan anymore, which is great because I burned it down. It drew a circle. Not bad. You wanna see it? At least nothing got destroyed. And I got a circle. Now that I could actually weld with this thing, I started going for it. So close! So goddamn close! What happened? Oh, the cable fell. The cable that guides the metal filament was always falling, so I strapped it down. It looks like a bird shat on my 3D printer. As you can see, when I run the machine continuously for a long time, the sheet steel metal warps everywhere, and even though I could solve this problem with a thicker sheet of steel, I can't really get one right now, so I tried to solve the problem, by pausing the print at each layer. So, I gave it a little bit of a grind. So you guys can see, there's definite, definitely some height there. See the other side? Yeah. I'm gonna try another stuff. We're getting somewhere. And that is what matters. Why did you stop? Wait. Okay, so now the metal is not warping as much, but the printer stopped out of nowhere. Now, it took me a while to figure this out, but in the end the fault was on the printer's bed. Because I by default set a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius for the bed, and the bed was getting really hot because of the molten metal, the printer would just pause and wait for the temperature to get back down to 20 degrees. To solve this problem, I ripped off the temperature sensor on the bed, and in this way the printer has no idea what was going on. Jesus Christ, 
shatter the glass. I mean, it makes no difference. Look at that. Well, you're going straight to the garbage. Unfortunately, there was one problem that I wasn't able to fix. Actually, there was several problems. Because the nozzle is angled, it's hard to predict where the metal filament is going to hit. Also, it's not easy to set a correct layer height, current flow and filament speed without doing a big number of tests, which I can't really do because I would have to buy a lot of sheet steel metal. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not made out of gold. Even though in the end I wasn't able to 3D print a rocket nozzle with this machine, at least I learned a lot. For example, I learned that this machine is able to weld better than me. To be fair, this idea is not as crazy as I made it out to be, because you can easily find on the internet videos of welding machines strapped to CNC machines that do just exactly what I was trying to do. In the end I didn't get my metal 3D printer, but you might just get a regular one. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was TMM Play, and he suggested that I could build a steam engine only using tomato cans. That sounds like fun. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, this is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!